Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Wasmatic, and welcome to Fortnite. I've been playing this game for about a month now, and I thought it would be an opportune moment. Now I've actually got under the skin of basically all the controls and the cards and the XP and the leveling and the schematics and the loot llamas. Uh, oh, it, 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 there's a lot to this game. Uh, the learning curve is quite steep, and I thought I'd try and help by just telling you all about my learning in the game. I'm only power level 18, as you can see on the top there, but nonetheless, it is a great the game is great to play, it's great fun. So let's start with the, the basic premise of the game. Uh, the world has been basically destroyed, 98% of the world's population has been wiped out as this storm has descended upon the planet. You are one of a handful of survivors who are fighting back against the storm. And you play as a commander. The first important point to note, the, the commander is not a playable character, the commander is you, so you are in charge of all of the people who you can utilize in playing the game and I'll go into that in more detail so the commander basically when you play a mission so these are all the sorts of missions you can play here when you play one of these missions you earn XP for that mission that XP will then level this skill point XP bar and um, there's no actual level that I can find for the commander you have a power level but that's something different that's the that's based on your home base so you get a home base here which you can build um, anyway, so the commander earns experience through doing the missions, and those ex when you when you earn experience and you level this bar up, you can say I'm only four of uh, thirteen thousand three hundred and fifty there. Uh, once you've leveled up, you get these skill points, and those skill points are for you as a commander to spend on these top skill trees here. And there's four tiers. You can see in the first skill tree here, I'm pretty much finished. I've unlocked most of the abilities. There's all kinds of different abilities. Some give you enhanced damage. Some give you uh, gadgets to use when you're playing. Uh, this is a loot box which gives you resources because you need to build bases in the game and use resources to do that. So the, the commander skill points, you apply in these skill trees. And as I've said, there are four tiers. I'm only, and look at the size of these things. Huge. Uh, you you can select them all. I would recommend. I certainly did on skill tree tier one. Um, I've I've unlocked everything. I'm not sure if you can actually play through the skill tree without unlocking everything because there are prerequisites. Um, so certainly these middle elements here, if you would look, uh, it doesn't tell you, but some have prerequisites. Uh, no, you can't see them once I've unlocked them. There you go. Um, so, those are your skill trees earned with Commander's XP. There are also some other points that you gather over time. So when you log off and time ticks by, you earn um, research points. You can see I'm earning at a rate of 54 per hour at the moment, and I have a maximum storage of... It says 2,130, but I'm not sure why it says 447 and 5325 there. But, your research points basically go to some other skill trees, so your research tiers. And these are basic enhancements to you, your heroes, when you play the heroes, and your party, so you can enhance, let's take an example here. So these are enhancements to your hero damage, uh, offense plus two, offense plus three, offense plus three. But then as we get into here, that then gives a bonus to the party that you're playing with. So when you're playing with friends, you can actually apply bonuses. Again, I'm basically grabbing everything in here that I can. I started off uh, looking at some damage resistance because I'm playing a tanky character. Then I got some health, uh, and now I've started putting points into um, offense because basically I couldn't kill much quickly, which is very important in this game. So you're playing as commander. Those are your skill trees. Then you get, um, so the, the the characters that you actually play when you go into a game are your heroes. Now if you've bought the standard version of the game, I think you start off with one hero, which is a soldier, and then as you level up, you, uh, you can earn more heroes through completing quests and through grabbing loot from loot llamas. Now, I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a second. So I'm playing a constructor at the moment. This is a guy who builds bases and traps and defends them. And that's the great fun for me in this game, is building a base, putting up a defense, funneling zombies or monsters through these uh, channels that you can build, and then placing traps and just standing at the end and shooting the snot out of them. Um, so you play your heroes. And as you can see here, if I go and have a look at... Uh, two seconds. 
heroes. So these are all the heroes that I have at my disposal to play. As you can see, it's very similar to most games in terms of the levels of hero are dictated by the colour. I don't have any here, but greys are, uh, are sort of very common. Uh, these are uh, greens are uncommon, blues are rare, purples are epics, and then I don't have any legendaries. Legendary heroes? I don't have any legendary heroes. Okay, there you go. So when you're playing, when you're actually playing a character in the missions, you choose what hero you want to play dependent upon the play style that you prefer. So I prefer to play as you can see, a constructor, so I like building the bases, I like the defensive elements of the game. Um, you can also play an outlander, as you can see here. Outlanders are very good at finding loot. Again, loot's really important for crafting, which is something that we all need to do for weapons and traps. I'll go on to that in a second. So, uh, I've got here, I've got, you've got your outlanders, you have ninjas, you have constructors, and you have soldiers. Uh, and that's it, I think. And now there are subclasses of outlanders and constructors. So I have my two main constructors are uh, this guy, who is a base Kyle. So that means he he puts this this power base down inside a fort, and it gives the fort some enhanced capabilities. But I also have this rare hero who is a power base Nox, and that's different to the base constructor. So you have a constructor who's a base constructor and then you have a power base constructor. You basically have the same ability but it does different things. Those are your playable characters. My personal preference is that I always keep an outlander, especially a recon scout, leveled up and then I also keep a constructor leveled up because that's my preferred playstyle. If you like out and out DPS then soldier I think is the one for you. The uh, ninjas are, are pretty good fun. Ninjas are good fun as well, but it, it's it's. Um, I prefer to play something more tanky in the game. Anyway, there we go. So, those are your heroes. Then, you have your survivors, and these are basically survivors and squad leaders are the way that you enhance the abilities of your heroes. In addition to the skill points that we've already seen. So I'll take a simple example. This is one squad that I've built. You can see that they're all epics. You get two types of survivors. A lead survivor. I have a handful of those there. Now the lead survivors have two elements to them. A personality and a, a skill. So you'll see that she is an adventurous personality and she is a doctor. Um, Basically, what you should try and do with your squad, so you have your lead survivor, you pick your lead survivor, then you should ideally align those lead survivors with the same personality, and that will give you uh, a personality match bonus. At the same time, the survivors you put into the squad to complement the squad leader, if you can get them to have the same ability, which is this element here, that will then apply a bonus to your hero in your gameplay again. So because I'm playing a constructor, I've gone for all of the bonuses that support constructors pretty much. So on this one, for example, you can see that I've built trap durability plus 8% because I use a lot of traps. That's these elements here. And then you can see that I'm building towards trap damage. So when I unlock this slot, I'll, I'll put some trap damage in there as well. Uh, as you play through the game, you unlock more and more um, squads. And then you can build more squads with different capabilities. So this one gives a health bonus. And um, this gives a trap durability bonus again. You can see I've got some legendaries in there. And this gives some health bonus again, so it's lending itself to my playstyle, which is very tanky. Build the base, stand back, and tank anything that comes through and defend. So there you go, you've got your commander, you've got your heroes, you have your lead survivors, and then you have your survivors. Then, you have your defenders. Now the defenders are really, really important for me in my play style. Defenders you place on pads that you can construct. They're considered traps and basically you put a pad down on your fort. You then drop the defender onto that, that pad and then you can have a number of different options for the defenders. Then you give that defender a weapon, you give that defender some ammunition and when you start playing a defense they will, they will uh, defend with you. So for me, for example, this is my storm shield defense which is one of the game modes. And I have a soldier who fires an assault rifle, and then I have this guy who fires uh, a pistol. There is also, somewhere in here, I have uh, defenders that I can put into 
normal missions as well. So for those normal missions, I have a sniper, which is this. No, it's the wrong button. You have to take my word for it. She, oh, there you go. She's a sniper. Uh, and then I have an assault rifleman. And then I also have a shotgunner. So I have a long range, medium range, and a short range defender. So when I build a fort in a mission, I can then drop those defenders at key positions, strategic positions. So I always have the sniper in an ele elevated position on the fort. They get to snipe long range when the monsters are coming in. Then the rifleman is a bit lower down, but with a good visibility across where the, area, uh, the enemies are attacking from. And then I have the shotgunner right at the front behind a wall, so if anyone comes near the base, he's the guy that takes them down along with me, playing the hero. So you have your commander, you have your squad leaders, you have your survivors, you have your defenders. Then we have schematics. Now, weapons that you loot in a mission have condition and they are uh, they they eventually are destroyed through using them. All weapons are destroyed through using them, and when you when you acquire new schematics, and I'll go into the mechanisms by how you do that in a minute, when you acquire new schematics, you can craft these schematics, and this is where we start to get into the leveling mechanics. So I'll start with the weapons. So I, I have these schematics. These are all items that I can craft in the game. I sort them by rating, so the trap is a favorite, so I've got that. My highest rated weapon is this big hammer. Then it's that trap, then it's that legendary shotgun, and so on and so on. Actually, I use this crowbar a lot because if I just go back to my hero, you'll see there is uh, somewhere. This hero has a bonus when he uses a. Can I view him? There we go. Here we go. So, kinetic overload is a cooldown of six seconds. Uh, uh, damage type is considered to be plasma. Critical hits with hardware and melee weapons trigger a kinetic overload, dealing an additional additional damage and a knockback to the target. So, when you start to look at my uh, schematics and you look at this, that's a hardware weapon. I've leveled that up to level ten now, and I'm just waiting to unlock a skill node in this in the second skill tree tier. To, uh, to level that weapon up to two stars. I don't think I have any weapons at two stars. I don't, but I do have... Uh, so, sorry, I do have some heroes that are two stars. So these are the items that you can level up. And to do that, you simply look at them, click on Upgrade and Inspect. This is a trap that I can evolve. So that's been leveled to the maximum level. Level 10 of 10. Uh, what else do I have here that hasn't been leveled up? That's level 10 of 10. That's I know that is. There, so we go. So that's level 6 of 10. I don't have enough skill points, but if I wanted to, I could apply those, spend those skill points and level up. The same is absolutely true in terms of the leveling mechanic for your heroes, for your uh, survivors, for your defenders. So everything in the game, you choose where you apply the XP that is earned. Now, here's the big difference. The XP that is commander XP, you earn through doing missions. The XP that you need to level your weapons, your traps, your heroes, your survivors, your defenders, is all earned through quests and loot. <clears throat> so let's go to the, let's have a, a quick look at the quests. Uh, but you know, I haven't got any quests that are going to give me XP. No. Typical. I've got some bacon. Oh, well, so um, you can earn XP predominantly through acquiring loot llamas. I know, don't, I don't know where it comes from, but these are the loot llamas, and these are where the microtransactions will come in when the game is, is fully launched. These loot llamas, and I can't actually buy one at the moment, and I'm certainly not going to pay that. Um, these loot llamas are... Uh, you earn the V-Box, so if I go back to my quest, you'll see that, uh, where are they? I can earn 50 v box for that and 20 Founders Coins, which is a special event because it's the launch of the game. So there I've got 150 v box I can earn. That will get me, I don't know how many v box I have at the moment, but that will get me at least one Loot Llama, Upgrade Llama. Now the Upgrade Llamas 
or RNG, so you can hit it once, it will explode, and you'll get some weapon XP, some hero XP, some survivor XP, you might get a weapon out of it, a schematic out of it, and so on. And that's where you earn the levelling capability for all of those elements. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The launch event llamas are, these are the founders, so they will have different events in the game and through, for those events you'll get different types of coins or, or um, currency you can earn which you can spend to get uh, certain items. Now the thing about the upgrade llama is when you hit it, and I should have saved one to show you, when you hit it, it has a chance to upgrade. So it starts off as a piñata and you hit it, and if you hit it and it upgrades, it basically turns solid silver, metal, all the the tassels fall off it, everything falls off it and it turns metal. So when you then hit that, if it if it then is destroyed when it's silver your loot will be rarer rare, more rare <laughs> so it will be, you'll be looking at uh, rares, uh, epics I think it's unlikely to get any legendaries but you'll be looking at rare and epics and you'll certainly get more survivor XP, more hero XP so on and so forth there is a chance again when you hit that loot llama for it to go gold and then you're going to get certainly epic and legendary items out of it. And this is my only issue with the game is that at some point I think I will see that the ability to earn V-Bucks and the ability to acquire XP and spend XP is limited by the number of missions and quests that are available or the amount of money I want to spend and I never do spend, I never spend on games. Uh, with microtransactions. So the good point to all of this is if you, you have an option to retire your heroes, I'll talk about these squads in, in, in a minute, but you have an ability to retire or recycle items. Uh, let's look at your weapons for example, and if I've got something here I can retire that one. Can I? Re so if I recycle that, I can't. Okay. What can I? Let's just recycle that. So you can see that if I recycle that, I'll get XP back. So the point is, there you go, I'll grab that. Um, <clears throat> once you've earned that XP, it sits in a big pot and you choose where you spend it. So I could take my most, my highest level hero, who's this guy, Power Base Nox, and I could choose to retire him. And I won't at the moment, but if I retired him, I would get all of the XP back. Let's have a look at this, retire. So if I click on him, yeah, let's try and click on him. So you can see I'll get all of the XP back for that guy, which I'm not going to, that I have spent on levelling him up. So the XP is a, is a pool that you earn and it gets bigger and bigger, but you have to choose where you spend that XP. The same for weapons, the same for traps, the same for your survivors, and the same for your squad leaders and your mission defenders. Every item of XP for your for your leveling mechanic in the game is earned through loot llamas, and you get those loot llamas by either spending real world money or completing quests. Um, I haven't struggled to acquire loot llamas so far in the game, but I think I can see that coming. And this is the biggest downfall of this game, unfortunately. Um, I think the microtransactions could kill it because this is a game that I've paid a lot of money to play and to test and it's going to go free to play at some point in 2018 and then the microtransactions I think will be even more stringent and there will be more of a dependency upon those microtransactions. I hope I'm wrong but I don't think this game in higher levels will be playable without exp spending real world money. <coughs> Excuse me. So, the one thing that I need to finish off on is there are two other elements I haven't mentioned. Your primary hero in this hero screen <coughs> is the hero that you play. That's the hero that you play, you control when you're in the game. You then also get squad bonuses by using other heroes in support slots here. So you have two squad bonus slots and then there are, a as you can see there, a support squad bonus and a tactical squad bonus. So the tactical, if I examine this character here, <coughs> All heroes have one or two bonuses. Some heroes have both tactical and support, and some have only tactical and some have only support. You only ever get two bonuses that you can apply to your hero when you're playing him. And so, for example, this hero here has uh, the hotfix bonus, which increases building repair rate by 10%. So I'm applying that because it's a constructor. This hero has a tactical bonus, 
which is uh, for the duration of Warcry, your maximum shields are increased by 25%. Now that's that's not a good... That doesn't apply to my hero that I'm playing here, but that's because I played a soldier last night and I've not changed it back. Then you have your mission defenders. As I've described before, when you play a mission, you put a, a defender pad down and you can, you can assign those NPCs to play with you. Uh, so that's it. You, you can see it's getting very complex. You have your commander, your skill trees, your research trees, your lead survivors, your your heroes, sorry, your lead survivors, your survivors and your defenders, your weapon schematics and your crafting. Now, there's a whole bunch more stuff that I could go into around playing in the game. Um, but for the moment, I think I've probably waffled on for long enough. That's nearly 20 minutes. Um, it's a great game. I'll, I'll talk about these expedition squads a different time. There's just use your heroes to go and acquire resources. Um, it's a great game to play. I really enjoy the missions. I really enjoy the whole feel of building the squads and changing the attributes and getting the bonuses. And just It's all about planning how you're going to support your primary hero. But, as I've said, the loot mechanic, I think, might let it down. I've talked for long enough. I really hope that this has been helpful for anyone who's watching. And if it has, please give me a like and a subscribe to the channel because I'm making a video a day now, apart from some weekends because my wife doesn't let me every weekend. But, um, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.